in December, UIL Holdings merged with Iberdrola USA, the subsidiary of the giant Spanish energy company, to create a brand new utility called Avangrid, that's simple AGR. The deal combined UIL's gas and electric operations in Connecticut and New England with Iberdrola's utility business in New York and Maine, not to mention their large wind portfolio. We're going to talk about that. I bring this up because the utilities were the best performing sector in the market during the first half of 2016, and the newly created Avangrid gave you some excellent gains itself. Stocks up over 25 percent since the merger last December. Not only does this company have a traditional utility business, one that supports a solid 3.8 percent dividend yield, but it's also a major developer of renewable energy with wind farms all across America. Plus, Avangrid blew away the numbers when it reported its most recent quarter at the end of April. So can this unconventional utility keep climbing? Let's take a closer look with James Torgerson. He's the CEO of Avangrid to find out more about his company and his prospects. Mr. Torgerson, welcome to Mayor Bunny. Good to see you, sir. Have a seat. Well, you know, the, this is exciting for me because, uh, like many people who have kids in their 20s, I do, they always say sustainable, sustainable, sustainable. Give me some company that is. Now, you've got a traditional utility business, but you're also the major wind company, your, your parent, the major wind company in the world. Is it competitive? Yeah, wind power is competitive today. When you look at the cost for wind, it's very comparable to a gas combined cycle plant. So you can generate wind as same price as you can get for uh, any other electricity source. So, yeah, but, okay, but let me just go there. I mean, sometimes it's not windy. Well, it's not windy, but the, the factor they have, the capacity factor they call it, it's what, how much it, the wind blows. For the newer ones, it's like 50% of the time. So then the other part we're going to need is more storage to be able to generate the electricity, store it, and then use it other times. You do have to have backup. You're right. The wind doesn't blow all the time. But it's possible because Spain has got such a huge component that's done by wind that we could have that in this country someday. Yeah, between wind and solar, too. Right. But both of them, yeah, you can, as long as you have another source to back it up, they use hydropower and they right. use pump storage. They pump up it and bring it down at night or when the wind's not blowing, then they use the electricity from that. So there are other alternatives. Your utility has exceptional growth, much higher than the traditional ones we follow. How much of that is wind and how much can wind add to growth over the multiple years? Well, we're looking at 8 to 10 percent growth in our earnings for the this next five than, years. You're talking about an area of the country that you were from that never had any... No oh, growth. that's true. The utilities are growing. The rate base is probably growing about 6 percent. Right. The wind is adding quite a bit more because we're adding more. We're gonna, we already have contracts with purchase power agreements for another 744 megawatts that we'll have up and running by the end of 2017. We're looking to add another 600 megawatts on top of that at least by the end of 2020. So when you look at we have 5,700 megawatts of wind power today, we're going to put in another 1,500 megawatts in the next five years. Hopefully, we can even do more than that if we can get more purchase power agreements in place. Okay, so what do you use? Is it a GE technology? Whose technology do you use? We use a number of them. Okay. GE, Gamesa, Vesta. We use all, right. all the major ones, and we bid it competitively, and they're, the technology is actually fairly comparable, but right. they're all a little bit different, and you know they've gotten so much more efficient, and they've right. gotten better because they use software now that can help dynamically control how the wind, when the wind shifts a little right. bit, they can dynamically control the wind turbine so that it's getting the maximum output from those plants. Well, is this Internet of Things and machine learning that we're talking about? Somewhat, right. but it, it's actually, we control everything in the U.S. from one control center. We can control all of our wind turbines from one spot and shut them down, bring them up, do whatever needs to be done. And we check them to make sure that they're performing adequately, we can maintain them. So, yeah. One thing that's amazing to me is that we've all become convinced that the only place that wind really works or is cheap is in the Great Plains, and Texas has a lot of it. But you're really in New York. I mean, where in New York does they have the up center in, of wind? Up in the Adirondacks. We, you know, along the ridge lines there, you get more wind. We're building them in New York and New England, Texas, right. out in the west in California, up in uh, Oregon, along the Columbia River Gorge, and also in the Midwest, up in, in the upper Midwest. The capacity factors are different. Right. Okay, now you also have an interesting project going on with uh, Metro North. Right. How do you make money on that? Well, that's our transmission business. And we're, you know, we've had uh, our transmission lines run along the catenaries for Metro North. What we found out, those are about 100 years old, so they need, we need to move the transmission lines off of it, keep it on the right of way. And we're going to spend about $150 million just moving that to make sure we can get the power back and forth along that corridor. Now, I look at your balance sheet. And it's actually, uh, it's very strong. It's even stronger than I would necessarily think a utility could be. So that would mean that you could also grow by acquisition if you wanted to. 
Yeah, M and A is always a possibility. Right. We're very happy with our organic growth okay. we can do. We got eight to ten percent earnings growth from what we know right now, what we can see, and yeah, we have a strong balance sheet. We only have twenty four percent debt. And so right. we, we have capability to do quite a bit right now. So the more, the better. Well, I think it's an exciting story. And for those who are looking for something, a younger person who's looking for growth, as we talked about yesterday, with sustainability, I think this Avangrid is a good one. That's James Torgus. He's the CEO of Avangrid. May have money's back in. Right. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.